Welcome to the God's Word portion of the worship from Daleville Christian Church. The congregation here would want me to let you know that we believe that these words in the Bible come from God. That God who created everything cares about us. And the God who cares about us is trying to communicate with us. And God uses his word first. I'll also mention uh, Jesus. It is a season to mention Jesus. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Heavenly Father. We begin with an affirmation of our faith, and I believe this one is from uh, 1 Peter. It says, once we were in darkness, but now we are in light. Once we were no people, but now we are God's people. The reading of God's word for today is simply one verse from John's gospel in the 8th chapter, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Millions of believers around the world yesterday celebrated what we at Daleville Christian Church celebrate today, the infant Jesus being sought and found by the wise men so long ago. Most of the rest of the Christian world celebrated Three Kings Day yesterday, January 6th. I did not make today's Bible reading the very familiar report of the wise men seeking Jesus as we read it in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 2, the first 12 verses. We've read it so many times here. I imagine even among just this number present in the worship today, we could put together the whole passage from memory. It might not all be King James English, might not be all New International Version, but it would be correct English and from our own collective memory. No detail would be left out if I asked you to recall those 12 verses. But today's message assumes you know these verses. That the wise men themselves sought to see with their own eyes this child born whose coming the stars themselves announced in the heavens. These wise men remain a mystery to us even in the 21st century. We cannot be certain what it was they saw in the stars. We cannot be certain what land they came from. And therefore, we do not know what religion they might have claimed before they came to Jesus. We don't even know how many wise men there were or how many of these wise men made the journey to Judea seeking the king of the Jews. The most recent book I read on the subject suggested that the wise men were Nabataeans, which would mean that they were not all that far east. The author suggested the Nabataeans would have known scripture or at least be a, been acquainted with the prophecies while at the same time were also stargazers. It's an interesting idea. I can't claim that it helps us very much. Matthew told us what he knew. If Matthew knew more than that, Matthew didn't think it important enough to mention it. I decided to take Matthew and the Bible to understand these wise men. So, I reiterate, the wise men were not Jews. They were from a foreign land, and therefore they were also of some foreign pagan religion. The appearance of the wise men seeking Jesus is a fulfillment of scripture, several scriptures actually. I turn our attention to the fulfillment of the word of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Of course the great light is Jesus. 
Jesus himself, but I can't help thinking that these wise men saw something in the light of the stars that told them that this thing, this event, this birth, this person born would be life-changing for many people. The wise men saw something in the stars that others did not see, could not see, or did not want to see. It was a great light. And those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness on them has light shined. And this light coming into the world would shine on people who lived in a deep darkness as foreigners of some strange pagan religion. The people of the wise men were a people who lived in deep darkness. Now here at Daleville Christian Church, we have affirmed our faith with the following words from Peter 2. Jesus called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You and I have lived many years. Decades, some of us, in the light of Jesus Christ. We may have seen this light since we were children, even if we did not walk in the light. There are several places where the apostles remind us, as Jesus' followers, to walk in the light and to continue in the light of Jesus Christ. We may have forgotten what the darkness is. We may have little memory of what it is like to walk in darkness, although we see people walking in darkness all around us. We don't understand them. We don't understand them because they live in darkness. It doesn't make us superior to them that we seek the light and we seek to walk in the light does not make us superior to them. It makes us blessed. But that people walk in darkness makes them dangerous. Dangerous to everyone else. But the darkness also makes them dangerous to themselves. People who walk in darkness are liable to tumble and fall. People who walk in darkness are liable to stumble and knock things over, breaking things. At our age, falling can be a life-changing event. But just as those who walk in darkness are in some danger and are dangerous, what is even more dangerous is that they do not know that they are a danger to themselves as well as others. So it seemed to me, in order to understand the wise men and to understand ourselves, we may want to spend some time reminding ourselves what living in darkness means. If we can remember living in darkness and remember that we that many still live in darkness, we can and we will celebrate this event many believers in the world call Three Kings Day. When the wise men left the darkness and even avoided a king who was living in darkness, King Herod. They avoided Herod. You remember this detail from the report in Matthew when the wise men left Jesus and Mary and Joseph and went home a different way. Though they had told Herod they would return and tell them what they had seen and where. The wise men left Jesus and Mary and Joseph and went home a different way. King Herod is a good example of a man living in darkness, even living in deep darkness. And King Herod was a Hebrew, and yet he loved the darkness. People who live in darkness believe they are the center of the universe. Or if they don't believe that they are the center of the universe, they believe that they should be the center of the universe. And everything around them should go as they wish it to go. And if events do not take place as they want them to take place, they do everything in their power to make things go the way that they want them to go. King Herod was often worried about being replaced as king. That King Herod might be replaced by Jesus, whom the wise men claimed was born king. 
That Herod feared being replaced as king by Jesus is just one example of Herod's fear. And Herod's fear resulted in the death of young children. Still, Herod feared Herod's own sons would replace Herod as king, so King Herod had two of his sons murdered. The Bible claims that King Herod had many children murdered just in case one of them was Jesus because Herod wanted whoever was born king to die so that Herod could remain king. That, my friends, is living in deep darkness. In darkness, a person cannot see that other people are valuable. If a person lives in darkness, other people are only valuable as servants to them, the center of the universe. I mentioned in a sermon last year on evil that Adolf Hitler had members of his own Nazi party murdered. Why? Because Adolf Hitler saw those men as threats to Hitler's own place as leader of the Nazi party. Adolf Hitler lived in deep darkness. So when a person believes that they are or ought to be the center of the universe and so live in darkness, they usually can have no sympathy or empathy for others. Justice means nothing to people of darkness. Justice has something to do with fairness or equality. People who live in darkness are not interested in fairness or equality. If you would happen to hurt a person of darkness, the person in darkness will not just hurt you back, they might try to destroy you. In the book of Genesis, we read about, in Genesis chapter 4, before the time of Noah and the flood, there was a guy named Lamech, and Lamech is quoted as saying, I have killed a man for wounding me. I've killed a young man for injuring me. Lamech said, you hurt me, I kill you. That's why the Old Testament strove for equality. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Because before the great flood, Lamech acted to kill for an eye and to kill for a tooth. And the Bible is letting us know that Lamech was a human being, as we all are. Lamech was a man of darkness. The baby whom the wise men saw with their own eyes would later say in his life, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you, do not stand up to a, an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And then Jesus said, you've heard it said, it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. You see, when you see the light, when you see the light that was coming into the world, Jesus Messiah, the light illuminates that God made you and God made everyone else for God's purposes, not our purposes. All of creation is to serve God, not us. Jesus came to save us from trying to make ourselves the center of the universe. Jesus came to fulfill God's purposes for us, for us which was to save us for God. To bring us to God. To bring us to the light because, as the apostle said, we human beings have loved the darkness. John 3.19. Remember Jesus' words on the cross to the thief who knew he deserved death? Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus didn't say that I will be with you in paradise. There's a difference. Jesus knew that Jesus was going to paradise that day. Jesus could have gone to paradise that day without the thief. But the thief could not have gone to paradise without Jesus. Today you will be with me, said Jesus. My wife Deborah, who is a speech therapist, says I'm too fussy about words. 
Believers sometimes want to say that I'm going to heaven. Technically, that's not true. Jesus will take you to heaven. We can't go to heaven. We can't go to heaven unless Jesus takes us there. People who have seen a great light see that. The Apostle Paul will say this about his own behavior in the church, 1 Corinthians 10, even as I try to please everyone in every way, for I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. I'm not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. The Apostle Paul was never looking for fans of Paul. Paul flat out denied that in his letter called 1 Corinthians. In chapter 1, Paul only wants Jesus followers, not followers of Paul. Paul never placed himself in the center of the world. Paul always placed the Lord God in Jesus Messiah in the center of the world, exactly where the Lord God belongs. The Apostle Paul saw the light. Remember Paul's encounter with the light of Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus? Acts chapter 9. The words of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising Often in the Jews' understanding, the word nations means the Gentile world. Israel followed the true God. All the other nations did not. So the nations meant that the Gentile world would indeed come to your light, O oh God. Perhaps one way God's light dawned on the wise men was this. They saw in the stars, perhaps one star's rotation or movement through the astrological signs, they saw an announcement of a birth in Judea. And even if they knew nothing of the Old Testament prophecies, and they probably did not know, the signs in the sky told them that this birth was no accident. This alignment of the lights in the sky was not a happenstance. This birth was not just one more birth among many. A birth on earth announced in the heavens? This birth tied together heaven and earth. And indeed, the birth of Jesus did tie heaven and earth together. If the wise men didn't know it already, this proclamation the wise men saw in the stars did mean that this life being born belonged to God. And they might have concluded that this light they were seeing in the sky also belonged to God. If they had Hebrew scriptures available to them, and we don't know, but you and I know, the God the wise men were discovering is the God who made the light. All light. We can read in the first book of the Bible, the first chapter, the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, right up front. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. At God's word, the light was created. Light and life begin with God. Without the sun's light, there's no other life on earth. God has made it so. God has made life possible. We know of many ancient peoples who worship the sun and the sunlight. The Hebrews did not worship the sun. They worshiped the one who created the sun. The earth and all that is belong to the living God whose creations we are. The world does not revolve around any one of us. The world revolves around God. God is at the center of the universe. Light serves God's purposes. All life is purposed to serve God's purposes, not our own purpose. Do you realize what a shift that is in thinking about the meaning of life? This is a shift from darkness to light. When we place ourselves and our purposes at the center of everything, that is a deep darkness. When the creator of light is at the center of everything, then we can live in the light. 
But God's word reminds us there are those who prefer the darkness. They still want to believe that they are the center of everything. That they are the most important in life and other people should serve them. Somehow, the wise men came to a more biblical conclusion, as Paul stated one could, Romans chapter 1. The wise men wanted to see this light that was coming into the world that would enlighten everyone. But you've seen these people who love darkness. We read about them daily in the news. We see their deeds broadcast and streamed throughout our country and around the world. Deeds of darkness, murder, killing, revenge, power hungry to control what they do not control, ready to make plans to steal, rob, inflict pain and distress. But what do they care? They believe that the world should serve them and not God. Do not forget those who are fond of darkness. Some of us were among their number once. But now we have seen the light that has come from the Heavenly Father. So too did the wise men see this light that was coming into the world with their own eyes. In the letter to the churches in Ephesus, we read, For you were once in darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. The Apostle Paul confirms the churches, for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. In our own Christmas carols, we declare it. O come, O come, Emmanuel, O come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here, and drive away the shades of night, and pierce the clouds, and bring us light. Silent night, holy night, Son of God loves pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Friends, continue in the light. Abide in the light. For our Lord Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life.